Okay, in today's video, as you can see, we're going to be going over orbital height. Now, in a previous video, actually in two previous videos, I went over how to calculate orbital velocity and orbital period. But in this video, which you can link to those videos in the upper right-hand corner of this one, you're going to calculate today orbital height. And we are going to be calculating the orbital height of this puppy right here. This is America's answer to Sputnik 1 and Sputnik 2. That would be Explorer 1. America's first satellite, artificial satellite, to orbit the Earth, and it had an orbital period of 114.8 minutes, and we are going to calculate the height above the Earth's surface based on that known orbital period period, as you can see it says right here. Now, in this video, I just want to say that um, we're going to be going from the idea that the orbit of Explorer 1 was a circular orbit. It was actually somewhat eccentric, but we're going to be going from the idea that it was a circular orbit and that it had an orbital period of 114.8 minutes. Okay. Now, we're going to use the idea that there was a force acting on Explorer um, one, which I designated M2 here. There's a force on Explorer 1 from the Earth, and there's a force on the Earth from Explorer 1, and we know that those two forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. The force on Explorer 1, because it's traveling in a curved path, is a centripetal force. The force on the Earth is the gravitational force, and we know, as I said, those two forces were equal and opposite and we're going to use that idea to calculate and derive the equation for the orbital height. And then calculate the orbital height. And we're going to start off with the centripetal force and Newton's second law, F equals MA, the force equal to the mass times the acceleration. Once again, when an object is traveling in a curved path, the acceleration is equal to V squared over R. That means that the force centripetal is equal to M2. So I want to make sure we know that's the explorer. M2 V squared over R. All right. And we have... Fg, the gravitational force from Newton's universal law of gravitation, is g, the gravitational constant, times m1, the mass of the Earth, that's the central object, times m2, divided by the distance between, the square of the distance between those two objects. As we'll talk about in a few moments, r is actually not just the height above the Earth's surface, but r is from the center of the Earth to the center of mass of Explorer 1, so we're going to have to calculate r and then subtract out the radius of the Earth, which we'll do in a moment, but we know we can set those two equations equal to each other because they're equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. I haven't said that enough yet. Now we can simplify because we have m2 on both sides. Cancel, cancel. We have an r on the left and two r's on the right. The radius cancel and we're left with v squared is equal to g m1 divided by r. Now we could simply solve this equation for r and plug everything in except we don't know the velocity. Remember, as I'll show you over here, the velocity is equal to the distance divided by the time. Now we know the time, the time is the period, that's 114.8 minutes, but we don't know the distance because we don't know the height, so we can't calculate the distance that the object actually travels when it goes once around the Earth. But we know, as we said, we're taking it to be a circular path. If it's a circular path, then the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, and we know 2 pi, and here we're going to solve for r, so we can solve for this r. And that's divided by t, and I put capital T because that's the designation for the period. Specific time is the period. So we're going to substitute this term, because this is equal to the velocity, in for this velocity, and we're going to square everything. Because it's velocity squared, and we get 4, because 2 squared is 4. We get pi squared, r squared, and t squared, the period squared. And that is equal to gm1 over r. Now, we know actually everything now. Either it's a constant, or we know what are the things we look up. 4 is 4, pi is pi, we're going to solve for r, t we were given 114.8 minutes, g is the great universal, is the gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, mass of the earth we can look up, so on the next slide we're just going to solve for r, I'm going to cross multiply, and that gives me 4 pi squared r cubed, because I have a squared here, I have r here, that's r cubed, is equal to t squared times gm times t squared times g times m1. Now, once again, I'm going to solve for r, in this case r cubed first. r cubed is g m1 times t squared. Multiply those three values, divide by 4 times pi r squared. Now, we don't want to know r cubed, obviously. We want to know r, so I'm going to take the cubed root, and this is the equation that we use to calculate the radius 
which is actually, then we'll use that to calculate the height, as we'll see. So it's the cube root of g m1 t squared divided by 4 pi squared. Okay, once again, this r is the distance from the center of mass of the Earth, the center of the Earth, out to the center of mass of the explorer. Okay, now in the next slide, we're just going to plug the values in. Oh, this is the equation. I put a little box around it so you notice that. And we know everything. This is a constant. This is a constant, basically, not really a constant. It's the mass of the Earth. This we're given. 4 is a 4, and pi is also a constant. So we're going to have to plug the period in for Explorer 1. has a period of 114.8 minutes. That's T. But we have to be very careful because the gravitational constant con constant has newtons in it and newtons has seconds in it then this time must be in seconds so we need to convert this time to seconds please do that first before you plug the value in multiply that times 60 times 60 okay or times 60 excuse me just times 60 160 and you get 6888 seconds all right 60 seconds in a minute, 114.8 times 60 gives you this many seconds, and now we can just plug everything in. Cube root, remember you got the cube root here, it's not, not just a square root, and that is going to be r is equal to the cube root of the gravitational constant. This is the gravitational constant with all the units. See, Newton meter squared, kilogram squared. The mass has to be in kilograms. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this is going to be the mass is m1 of the Earth. This is the period squared. It has to be in seconds, okay, because there's newtons in here, and there's seconds inside those newtons. And then we're going to divide that by 4 pi squared. And if you do all of that carefully on your calculator, check it a bunch of times, you'll get that the radius, okay, that's the height above the center of the Earth or from the center of the Earth out to the explorer, is 7.83 times 10 to the 6 meters. Okay, this is meters. Remember, this is meters. All right, if that's meters, then uh, we're going to convert that into kilometers. That's 7,830 kilometers. Now, remember, we said the r, this r is the radius of the Earth plus the height to the object. h is the height above the Earth's surface. So now, in order to get h, we're going to subtract out the radius of the Earth. The radius of the Earth, we're going to subtract these two values, is 6,371 kilometers. And you get that Explorer 1 with an orbital period of 114.8 minutes was orbiting the Earth, if it was a circular orbit, at 1,455 kilometers above the Earth. All right, that's the height above the Earth. Okay, and this is the equation we use. Check those values, plug them in carefully. Okay, now I did say we didn't know the velocity, but we, now we can just calculate the velocity because now we know the radius and we can calculate D because 2 pi r, the circumference of the circle. And this is the velocity, is the distance divided by the time. The distance is 2 pi r divided by t then. And we get 2, time, two pi, 2 times pi, times 7,830. Remember, this r is the distance from the center of the Earth out to the explorer. So it was the height above the Earth plus 6,300, the radius of the Earth, whatever that happens to be. I can't remember now. Okay. And we just divide by the time. Now we could put any time here. I converted this to hours because we want to know kilometers per hour. You could put any time here. You could put minutes, you can put seconds. But that gives us 25,757 kilometers per hour, which then you can convert that to 7.15 kilometers per second. And then you could go to meters per second or miles, whatever you want to do. But I just did those two. Okay, so there you go. I hope you found that video helpful. Orbital height. And if you found the video helpful, please do all of the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section. Thumbs up. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share with all your friends. Share this video. Thank you very much. And we'll see you in the next video.